Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, we in uh, Mahila Jagat Lihas Samiti, which is our latest organization, there are other organizations that I am associated with, which I'll talk about uh, uh, progressively later, have been saying for quite some time that, you know, the way the human race is devastating nature, there's going to be a backlash. And uh, what we have seen, COVID is just the trailer. It's just going to go on. So far we had droughts and uh, 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 floods. Now we have had COVID. And uh, if you see, uh, the, uh, the great thing about COVID was that the, uh, the lockdown resulted in, you know, our environmental parameters going up. You know, the rivers getting clean, they're getting clean and all that. So uh, COVID in that sense, more than uh, floods and droughts was a, uh, was a more uh, succinct kind of attack, uh, uh, counter-attack from nature. And we're going to see more of this as, as we go ahead. But the tragedy is that, you know, whether it's droughts or floods or whether it's COVID, the people who suffer from it are those who are least uh, destructive of nature. You know, people like us who are living in cities, we are destroying nature much more with our lifestyles and uh, uh, the way we live and the way we work and all that. The, the people who are living close to nature, especially the Adivasis, of course, the macro system is such what something that uh, uh, Ashish touched upon that the macro system is such that even Adivasis today uh, they are harming nature because just for survival purpose they have to do some things which are harmful to nature. But generally, because they are at a subsistence level, even today, 90%, 95% of the Adivasis are at subsistence level. Only a few people who have got uh, uh, the advantage of reservation and got into jobs and things they are. Uh, they have come come into this modern system of which we are uh, part, but most of but even even they they uh, they they are the ones who are suffering the most, whether it's COVID or droughts or floods and things like that. But uh, 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 what 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 we have done? So so what what our work is for thirty years? I have been working for thirty years, more than thirty years, thirty five years in this Western Madhya Pradesh region among the Bhil Adivasis. So, uh, like uh, 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 Ashish, I just came there uh, to work with them, and I learned from them a lot. You know, and what I most learned from them was their subsistence lifestyle. You know, they they are close to nature, and they they know the limits of nature, and they keep within those limits. Uh, 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 try try to keep within those limits as far as possible. So that that is a beautiful kind of uh, relationship. So their culture, their agriculture, their uh, forest relationships, the way they use their forests, they're all very sustainable. So in, in our organizations, I started with uh, the organization called Kherut Mazdur Chetna Sangat. This is the uh, a trade union of Adivasis in Alirajpur district. So that, that, that work started in 1985. And so when we learn from them, they have these communitarian processes. You know, there's a, a, a custom within the Adivasis, Bhil Adivasis in Western Madhya Pradesh called Dhas, in which it's a communitarian uh, uh, effort in which people, it's a non-monetized economy. So the, the traditional uh, Adivasi economy is a non-monetized economy. So they don't have money. So when they want to do some work, they get together. The whole community pools together their labor and then, then they do the work. If it, it might be weeding on somebody's farm or, you know, doing some uh, soil conservation work, but they all get together, do that work in somebody's farm. Next day, they'll do it in somebody else's farm or build a house or whatever. So, so this, this uh, traditional culture that was there of community, you know, service, community work, we, we leverage that. So in Ali Rajpur, this whole thing, uh, uh, when, we, when we started work in Ali Rajpur, uh, the forest department, there was no all this Forest Rights Act and all, as Ashish was saying, they, it came much later because of organizations like ours, many organizations across uh, the country, the ones in uh, Mendaleka and uh, various places in India, they got together and fought this battle and got the Forest Rights Act. But even before that, from 1985, we had this problem, the Indian Forest Act, you know, that Indian Forest Act, uh, from the latest version was that 1927 version. Uh, the British, it, it's, it, it makes the Adivasi a thief in his own backyard. So that, that's the struggle, that you have the law is such that it's, it alienates Adivasis from the forest. So the thing was that struggle against that, uh, uh, get a control of the forest, and then use the forest in the traditional sense, you know, in the way that the Adivasis have been using for so many uh, uh, millions, uh, uh, millennia. So that was the thing, and that's a great success that we achieved in Ali Rajput. Even before the Forest Rights Act, we, we got control of the forest fighting. There were a lot of fights and all that. 
going to jail and things like that. But then the uh, the Adivasi showed their strength, and so they uh, they got control of the forest, and they they rejuvenated the forest, the streams. They did uh, soil and conservation work and all that kind of stuff. Crores of rupees, you know, and it's all voluntary. You know, the the amount of investment if we now uh, uh, do it in money terms, it's in crores of rupees, but it's all voluntary. People getting together and doing it, and because that's part of their culture. the thing what ashish was very, very very important point that he made that the market and the education system everything is breaking that culture the police the police is a major uh, uh, this thing is the, the way they, they may break up the society they have their own uh, uh, dispute resolution mechanisms which are very democratic but these police fellows they go in and spoil that and then that, that creates a lot of problem a society that is uh, uh, a communitarian that has very little conflict it becomes conflict ridden people are fighting against each other and all these kind of things so so to prevent that you have to uh, uh, revive these communitarian systems and that is what we did and so that that was a, a, a big success in alirajpur even today uh, you, you can go and see and uh, uh, and then that helps when you have a communitarian uh, system a uh, 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 very powerful communitarian system where people are uh, together then they can implement the laws also whether it's anti sahukar you know these the the anti sahukar laws look it does the debt debt is a major way in which adivasis have been shattered you know right right from the beginning right from the jharkhand and everywhere all these problems are there in orissa and everywhere so debt is a major problem and that has to be tackled so these people they got together and tackled because the laws are there there are so many stringent laws for control of debt control of usury but they are not uh, implemented So when there's a uh, uh, organization there, they can you know force the uh, uh, government, and so the debt, all, all the south cars, they were the sidelined. You know, they, they, all this problem of debt, uh, uh, debt was totally solved. So this this whole thing, uh, when it's there, so then when a law comes, when a law like uh, uh, Forest Rights Act finally comes after such a long struggle, so then it's implemented. So Ali Ali Rajput District has one of the best implementations in the whole of the country. You know, the thousands and thousands of people have uh, got uh, the individual rights. and the unfortunately the community rights they, they have stalled the government doesn't want to give community rights uh, to the people but effectively people are in control of those forests so so the, it doesn't matter the forest department has been completely sidelined out there so this whole thing is there you know the institutions that arash was talking about that what will be the institutions that can ensure that you know we have sustainable and equitable development you know that you you uh, you uh, sustain nature and within within your society you have equitable so then you have these traditional uh, panchayats and then there's this another uh, movement that took place you know for uh, traditional panchayats in the uh, tribal areas so we are in fifth schedule areas as as you must all know that uh, india has two uh, tribal areas the sixth schedule and the fifth schedule areas so i i will i will not talk about the six schedule areas because there's nobody here <laughs> from the six schedule areas i concentrate on the fifth schedule areas in which we work and uh, uh, so within fifth schedule areas the the fifth schedule provisions themselves are very powerful so we tried to implement that but that because we are very a small uh, unit in just one district we couldn't do something but then pesa came you know the panchayat extension to schedule areas act which we are very much a part of that you know that uh, that whole process we are part of the forest rights act also the process of getting it legalized and then this uh, uh, panchayat extension to schedule area that that also we worked with all those uh, other organizations throughout the uh, country and pesa came in and madhya pradesh luckily due to uh, the intervention of uh, dr bd sharma uh, and uh, he managed to uh, influence uh, digvijay singh who was the chief minister at that time to make a lot of amendments to the panchayati raj act in accordance with pesa actually pesa itself is not enough pesa is a central provision with, from the constitution but unless the panchayati raj act of the state is amended to take in all those uh, uh, provisions of pesa you cannot you know implement pesa but luckily in madhya pradesh that was done so then we we tried to implement pesa also and that led to a huge uh, huge problem and then there were a lot of this thing and the police the state doesn't want to give those powers and things like that so there were a lot of confrontation people died in police firing and things like that but effectively what has happened is that we have managed again informally they have not within pesa provisions all those things that the gram sabha has become actually if that gram sabha becomes a recognized unit then whatever funds are coming for rural development or tribal development they can come to that gram sabha directly instead of you know this system of where you have sarpanch and then sarpanch is controlled 
sarpanch himself doesn't have throughout this country the panchayat the sarpanch has very little power it's all with those fellows bureaucrats in the uh, panchayat uh, this thing block uh, developer officer and all that they have so many uh, controls that the sarpanch uh, a very very few sarpanches especially adivasi sarpanches are able to do anything but if it comes to the gram sabha then the sarpanch also is not necessary you have direct democracy in the gram sabha and the uh, uh, within the pesa gram sabha is defined as the small hamlet you know it's not the normal gram sabha like in madhya pradesh there are two or three villages together in one gram sabha so then it's impossible to get all those people together in gram sabha to you know negotiate something or decide on something but within pesa it is that the hamlet the small hamlet in one place which has been a recognized unit that can declare itself as a gram sabha and then whatever funds that are you know supposed to come for development that comes directly to the gram sabha and then the gram sabha can because they are a small unit they can sit every day every day in the evening they can have a meeting and decide what to do and what not to do and things like that so that that, that whole thing of direct democracy that that is that is the core of adivasi uh, life you know that is what i have learned if i have learned anything in all these years it is this thing of direct democracy that is there uh, within the adivasi community and uh, 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 that that should uh, uh, that should inform the whole you know the uh, what gandhi's uh, principle of oceanic circles was that it, the whole system should be you know bottom up not top down we have had a top down system you trickle down development useless uh, how can anything trickle down you know the guy on top why will he allow anything to trickle down so nothing trickles down you have this term that you know you have trickle down and all that nothing it should be bottom up you know trickle up we will decide how much resources to give to you to somebody else above me you know that that that's the way it should go but it doesn't you know taxes go taxes go to the center and then the center uh, squeezes the states and the states squeeze the panchayat so eventually you don't have anything so this whole system is wrong and it has to be changed so what arash was saying what is the system so we have to have this oceanic circles kind of system that gandhi ji had suggested that was sidelined totally <laughs> it was never you know implemented put into the panchayati raj was put into the uh, this thing uh, uh, directive principles of state policy yeah right in the beginning right to education right to health and right to work and right to self governance four fundamental rights that should have been there within the fundamental rights chapter they put it into the, the, the uh, this thing directive principles of state policy chapter that is not justiciable and they never directed policy in this country country in this uh, uh, policy in this country was uh, directed by tatas and villas and all these people for their benefit and that is how all the development went so and uh, all all the people let alone adivasi adivasi is right at the bottom even even other communities they, they have not got anything whether it's dalits obcs or whatever there's a small 2 3% on top who have been skimming the resources right from the british times and they have been uh, even before that thousands of years we all know that you know savarna domination and things like that all that has gone on so that how to counter the thing is that you have to have this strong uh, adivasi in it, it, it's difficult in other places to do this but with adivasis because they have this uh, thousands of years they have been living like this it is possible to do it and if you step in and do it then you can uh, you can really do it so another thing that uh, 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 both arash and uh, uh, ashish mentioned was about culture very important thing you see uh, uh, this is the big problem is that today uh, globally you know it's all homogenized a culture that comes in through the tv 1930 tv was discovered and it is the biggest discovery for you know advancing capitalism and this destructive modern development it is poured in from tv everybody watches tv and now that's gone into social media also you have all these bloody tiktok and things like that and everything now tiktok has been banned but what is happening is on facebook facebook is giving short videos at me all abominable stuff that comes in i don't know i i, I never was on tiktok so i didn't know what was going on now because tiktok has gone all those guys have come on to facebook and they are giving at me you know and uh, this fellow comes in facebook every time i open my wall and the first thing i get is all these kind of useless videos that are coming in you know so this is this is what is dominating people even in adivasi area this all come in it's everybody on his phone and everything they don't see anything else they see all these videos and they are downloading and things and all that and all the data that is you know that is being given is wasted on all this kind of thing so how do how in that kind of a situation do you you know uh, protect your culture so in that respect 
in in Adiv in Bhil Adivasi areas from 1990s, early 1990s, we, we, the the Bhil Adivasis have had many movements. You know, in the Bhil Adivasi areas, it started with uh, Maharashtra Shamik Sangatana and uh, 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 Taluram uh, Dho, uh, Dhodre Bhumi Sena in Thane among the Warlies and all these people. They 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 had these uh, the organizations that were fighting for Adivasi rights and all that. And all these people, they got, and in Gujarat, we had, uh, uh, you know, Ashok Chaudhary and all these people th uh, that were there. They all got together and they formed the Adivasi Ekta Parishad. And they said that, you know, we, we, uh, we have all these strong points in our culture. So we will uh, develop a modern, modern system in which we take things from uh, modernity. We need all these things from modernity, something we need, numeracy, literacy, and all these things. We can't do without that in a modern society. But we have all these strengths in our culture. We'll put them all together and we'll have this Adivasi Ekta Parishad. So that Adivasi Ekta Parishad started in 1990s, early 1990s, and today it has millions of followers throughout the Western uh, Madhya Pradesh region. It's a big, big, uh, big organization. And they, they don't take funds from anybody. They have their own funds and they, their whole organization is totally Adivasi uh, based. They, they have their own intellectuals, everything, their pedagogy, everything, their schools, everything. And the culture. So what, what, what is very important is that in Western Madhya Pradesh, the culture, the Bheel culture is there. All their songs and, and uh, uh, those things, they, they sing their own songs with modern, modern instruments. They have DJs, you know, so those, those sound systems and everything is there. They are using guitars and all, this, all that thing. But the lyrics and the, uh, the music, that is theirs. And it's so strong that even mainstream society dances to them because they're, they're a dance based, you know, they're, they're Lyrics, are, their, their music is very simple. They don't have this big seven scale kind of thing. It's just two or three, uh, uh, their sargam is just two or three things and it's all rhythm dependent. So they, and dance, you know, so that, that it's, so that music now, even the mainstream people in their uh, uh, shadis and all that, they sing, uh, they dance to these tunes. So that is- Rahul, Rahul if you can just conclude in one so minute. This is, this is the last point that I was uh, uh, trying to make that uh, uh, w w w w in culture also, uh, these people, the the Bheel Adivasis, they have been able to retain. So whether it is uh, their livelihoods or culture and all that, because of their uh, inherent uh, systems that are there, which have been rejuvenated by various organizations that are working in this area, they have been able to sustain that. Thank you.